What's up, people? Welcome to my show, where I bring in different people from different career fields and walks of life to showcase their talents and specialties to the world. Today, I have with me Beverly Zone. He's a senior student, Matthew McNam. Woo! And a, ret- and, a retur- and a return to a place I haven't been to in a while. So, I mean, let's talk about that. So, so how long have you been doing KBEV since you started high school? Well, I, I, can't, I dropped KBEV in junior year, so I had to pick up my finance class, and then I spent my senior year working on just a bunch of other side projects and could never pick it back up again. But I was working here for about two and a half years. I worked from freshman year all the way to halfway through junior year. Uh, for and on that time, I ran a podcast for kind of similar to the one you're running right now, actually, uh, during quarantine. And then I ran the game reviews on the Cape of News channel. And if you go looking through those a couple of years ago, you can find them. Wow. And, you know, how does it feel being back in the space that used to be your classroom? It's a very bittersweet feeling because I have had I've put a lot of memories into this place, be it like the good memories, the bad memories, the hard work, the stress, but also the simple fire of it. And it's a difficult feeling to put into words. I've, I've complained, I've congratulated, I've done a lot here, and it's kind of, it's, I knew I needed to be here for myself uh, to give this little place a send-off. And when you started your freshman year, you said, were you in intro, or did you start right away in advance? I started in intro, which is, uh, I mean, for, for a lot of people who don't know how KBOB works, it's kind of where you just fumble around and do things, and Karen just kind of lets you throw a brick at a wall until one of them sticks and he brings you onto the main cast. Uh, that's where I ran a podcast that, uh, I remember, I think I made around 40 episodes of that, uh, all over quarantine. Wow. And... Uh, you know, like the the side projects. Take me into your side projects that you're doing now. Uh, okay, I can't mention all of them, but I have been working on a short film with a friend for the past, uh, with a group of friends for this year. I have done a good, and I've worked on professional projects here and there, here and there in my off time. Uh, as, of, as of late, I've mostly been working with the theater company because they've been very interesting. They've been a very interesting group of people to work with. And... Uh, I've been working on a couple of video games, but I can't mention too much about those. Yeah, I understand. And is acting something you want to get further in after high school? I took acting in junior year less because I thought I would pursue acting as a career, and more so I want to understand how actors work because I will, because I want to be a scriptwriter. That's what I want to do. Movies, games, anything, really. Uh, and I'll write a script for it. Even working on a book right now. But... The reason I joined acting was less because I wanted to learn how to act and more so I want to know how actors think so that when I kind of like need to tell them to do something, I can understand that. Because nothing is worse than a boss who doesn't know how your job works. Yeah, that's, that's, what, you, that's what you call a fake boss. A fake boss is someone who's giving you guidelines, rules that you have to follow, but they don't know how you work. They don't really know how the system works. Yeah, and that's kind of why I'm like, okay, if I want to write effective dialogue, I need to be working with people who are going to read it so that I understand, okay, this is how actors generally think so I can play to that. And how would, like, a... Because something that's kind of been really fun is, like, I think when you... For younger scriptwriters, you want the actors to work in a very specific way. You're like, this is how I think the character works, and I think you can bring that out of them. And sometimes it's like, okay, I want you to play it in this very specific way, but other times the improv they do can be really good and really interesting. So sometimes it's less about, I want this specific interpretation and more, I want to see how you interpret these lines. Yeah, well, I think think you're doing the right thing. I think you're taking the right steps to try and get into the mindset of an actor just to better understand how they work. And it's really going to take your future career to the next level and just make you a wonderful person to work with so congratulations to you yeah thank you Amato and again and again I think that's also a benefit of you having this kind of podcast you're going to be interviewing a bunch of different people who will come from all these different walks of life all these different you know work as you said all these different jobs and career fields and maybe you'll be able to take a bit of their advice into yourself and ideally the audience that's right you listen to us exactly and that's what I'm here for too not just for the guests, but for me to pass on some wisdom and advice to you as well. 
And the, the whole idea of my podcast, I just want to make it clear, is, you know, some interviewers, they, ha- they just have one specific type of people that they have on their shows. It could be athletes, it could be actors, singers, but I feel like you should have an open mind. You know, not disrespecting those people who run those podcasts or yeah. like that, but I just want to get a a different viewpoint from everyone, from singers to actors to athletes, all those people, because they really have, uh, they can really pass on some wisdom, different wisdom, similar wisdom that you wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have taken the time to interview those different people. Yeah, I recommend, again, uh, I know I told you this kind of behind camera, but I recommend just going around school and seeing who's interested because there are so many people who have interesting things to say that don't know that those things are interesting so giving them that platform is really cool <sighs> Ooh. Uh, mic breath yeah yeah and uh you know i want to we're in a new year now and you only have four months left before graduating high school and embarking on a new chapter into your, your young adult life so now that we're in the new year, what are some goals that you have? New Year's resolutions. All right. I, I have actually thought about this for a while. I have a couple of just minor ones, which is like, I want to work out more consistently because it's really fun. And to anyone who doesn't really work out consistently, I recommend you do it. Not because it's, not just because it's like healthy, but also because it, it is super fun if you can get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like that's just kind of a, a small thing for me. But, for, but another thing I want to do is I just like, I want to be working more. I... Just consistently working is the big thing, because, like, it's easy to do burst work as a creative or someone who likes to script write. Like, I don't know if you've kind of experienced this, but it's easy to write a lot in one day and very little another, and it's those creatives who are able to consistently work yeah. that really go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of my goal, just consistency. Yeah, I mean, it could be tiring. I mean, just work, staying consistent with the work. Uh, you know, just doing multiple things all at one time. But I feel like if you're doing something that you enjoy yourself, no matter how much it may be, no matter how tiring it may be, I feel like there's a true reward in that because when you get that work done, you can finally have some time to rest, to to be lazy, and to just take a break. You know, uh, I, I like using uh, Sisyphus metaphors because they're very entertaining to me, but I think, like, every day we are pushing our boulders up that hill, but when you can be proud of it being there for, like, a few mi- minutes, that's when you know you're doing worthwhile work. Even if you got to keep doing it, keep pushing this boulder, you know, when it's in place for a few minutes, you can be proud of yourself. And I think I know a lot of people who either aren't really proud of what they're doing or don't really care about pride in their work, but the people I do know who take pride in their work are really special people. Yeah, and it's, it's just really about getting to know and understand yourself as a person, even even the bad stuff, because I see it in people. It's, it's honestly a, pretty much the human condition. Unless you don't know how to change that part of that human condition to better yourself and to evolve, you know, most humans, they... They're too afraid, they're too scared, they, they don't want to learn the bad side of themselves, so they run, and they hide, and that's something that's easy for us to do as humans, but, I mean, it, it's good to take pride in the good side of yourself, the side that people enjoy about you, but tap into that that fear of yours, and that's that other side that you've been running from, because if you don't, no matter how, no matter the stuff that you do in life, the friendships that you have, the relationships, whatever it is, it is going to haunt you, and it's going to be a part of your inner demon. I have a lot that I want to mention with that, because I think you're very much right. I think something that we all need to do is use that kind of, those negative tendencies as motivation instead of something we should be scared of. Yeah. But also, but also I've met many people who kind of define themselves by their weaknesses, and I, th- and there's... There's a health. There's a healthy balance between not recognizing your weaknesses and being overcome by them. And I think the best way to find the healthy middle ground is take pride in what you're good at, recognize your weaknesses, yet also work as much as you can to improve them. Like, uh, and then I remember there's this quote I once heard. And it is, "It is easy to be miserable. Being happy is difficult." Uh, and you kind of talked about that, like running away from those negative tendencies. 
the the hardest thing in the world I think for us to accept is that the more you run from something from yourself, the, the faster it catches up. Yeah. It's about just kind of dealing with that stuff day to day that's gonna make you happy. It's not a happiness isn't like a I think that's something that our school kind of fails to explain. Happiness isn't a feeling, it's a state of being, and it's not easy. It's something you have to constantly monitor. And, like, we talk a lot about mental health at the school. Uh, ASB, you're doing great. You're doing the best you can. Yeah. And I really, and I admire that, but also, like, happiness is difficult, and I think that's something that we are recognizing and still trying to work out. Yeah, I agree, and... And especially for wealthy people, because, you know, this is, we get, Beverly Hills is a wealthy community. Majority of people are wealthy here, but, you know, this, it was honestly eye-opening this year because for the first time I realized that, you know, even there's some wealthy people that I've met who, who aren't happy. They have everything that they need that somebody else could wish for, but I see, I even see it here at school where, there's still some wealthy kids who are, you know, they're messing up, they're getting in, they're getting in trouble, and they're not happy, and that's just the human condition. Is it's easy to get into that miserable uh, mindset and to feel miserable and not happy, but to just at least look at what you have to to feel grateful for that and just keep working with keep working within yourself to to be happy. So I agree with what you said. Yeah, it's a... I mean, you kind of just summarize the idea of, you know, money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah. Does money make happiness a bit easier to achieve? In certain senses, you could you could argue that, be it buying thi- being, uh, being able to pay a therapist or just simple fleeting pleasures that you can get with money, but long-term happiness is not easy. And... Uh, I don't know if this makes any sense, but there's this quote I once heard. I, I'm, I'm full of quotes. I'm, an, I'm a writer. We remember these things. That's cool. um, and the quote is just, there, people can have easier lives, but no one has an easy life. Like, that doesn't mean that everyone's a victim and we can all hold hands in nirvana, but it does mean that everyone has their own issues and you can recognize and humanize them with that. Yeah, and there's always going to be problems, I feel, but as long as you're staying up to date with yourself and always taking some work to reflect and just try and make things better for yourself. I mean, I feel like no matter what comes your way, you are going to have a fulfilling and happy life, which is the goal. And most importantly, be honest. Be on- they, they say, you know, you know, be honest to others, but I feel like the most important thing is honesty within yourself. Because if you don't have honesty within yourself, then, you know, it could screw you. I agree with that. Honesty is something that I think is, it's it's not as easy as it seems, because sometimes you do want, because sometimes you lie to yourself, because sometimes you're like, I want to feel like I'm better or worse than, than I actually am. And sometimes, and sometimes, you know, fake it till you make it can be good in certain scenarios. Yeah. But I think the best way to promote honesty with yourself begins with others. And I... I'm trying to make sure I say this properly. I think being honest is something we should do a bit more often, because I know a lot of people who lie, and they don't do it because of manipulation. They're like, I didn't want to tell them that I disagreed with them on this thing because I was scared of hurting them. And that is only hurting that person even more, because every amount of disagreement that you lie about in the present builds up to a, to a big disagreement in the future. It, it doesn't help anyone when you lie, and it only makes both of you miserable, and I think that's something we really need to get across, because we always, like, I think a lot of us hide what we're thinking because we want to make sure the other person is happy, and that is not healthy for either of us. Yeah, and and I feel like the, you know, this this will be my last point, and then I'll, I'll get to the next question, but... Um, yeah, I feel like the goal in life is to do what's best for you. I mean, be thoughtful of others, what they believe in, uh, what they're into, even if you don't agree with it yourself. Like the, like you know, don't talk about people's parents, politics, religion. That stuff you can keep to yourself because that stuff can lead to a big disagreement. But the other stuff, you know, just be honest. And those who agree with you, you know, even, I mean, yeah, those who 
or your true friends, they may disagree with you, but it's not going to hurt the relationship. I think what's important isn't differences. It's the ability to accept them. Like, it's not... Because I think being around people who are the same as you will not help you very much. It's I'm not saying to only be friends with people who are completely different, but obviously having some people that have different viewpoints from you is always healthy. And to me, the line between debate and argument walking that line, making sure that I can disagree with you, but I can empathize, and we can have a, fo- we can have a sophisticated conversation, as I, th- is I think, something that we're losing more and more of nowadays, and just, again, the ability to sit down, like this podcast, which you should follow on Spotify, uh, <laughs> make sure to just kind of sit down with someone you disagree with, and instead of having a shouting match, just listen to each other for a bit. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, don't, never be afraid to be honest about your thoughts you, as long as they're thoughtful just be honest and if someone is not, isn't going to like you for that then that's on them you don't need to worry because they aren't your real friend so so that's my last closing point uh, for that yeah alright well to the now my next question for you is uh, where are you from like have you were you born in California I was born here yes wow uh uh, my parents did immigrate here, but I was born here specifically. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to talk too much about it, mostly because I admittedly didn't ask my parents prior to this interview if I could talk a bit about them, but uh, they've obviously worked very hard to, you know, c- I think all of our parents have probably worked very hard to get the position they're in right now and to keep us going. Yeah. Uh, and I am so, I am more grateful to them than I think I ever have words for. And I want to make them proud just by the, by being successful in my own way rather than just picking up the businesses they've set up, though. Yeah, and yeah, I've noticed this within myself and other kids. I don't know if you've dealt with the same thing, but I mean, for parents like that to have worked hard for us, I mean, they. I'll admit, my mom has done some things that I don't necessarily agree with, or. I may not like it, but she's still a good mother, and I don't want to let those feeling, those other feelings that I have for her, which would be considered negative, I don't want to let that get in the way of that relationship to the point where I'm not being grateful and I'm not honoring what she does for me, because I feel like that would just, I don't know. I, I spoil the relationship. Yeah, spoil the relationship. I want you to, I will say don't ignore those tendencies, though. Be it just like your base again, kind of we were talking about disagreements earlier. There's a lot of things I, d- I disagree with my parents on. Be it just certain viewpoints or opinions on, like, media. And I think the most important thing is not saying, oh, we disagree, you're a horrible parent, that's dumb, and that is an immature way of looking at things. But, again, it's all about that balance of, like, I recognize the negative tendencies that maybe I don't want to pick up or things I disagree with you on, but I can recognize that you've been nothing but good to me and you've been doing your best. I think it's sort of that that middle ground. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, you know, I'm glad that you are able to recognize uh, what your parents have done for you. And you seem you seem very grateful for that. I, I really am. It's it's hard for me to explain. I'll, I'll, I will not pretend like I don't complain about my parents sometimes. And I think we, we have... Obviously, complaining too much is unhealthy, but I think... <coughs> Man, I should have asked for that drink of water before this. Okay. But um, I think the abil- and I think that's okay. But as long as I recognize, as long as we recognize the good and the bad, I think we can be healthy people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you, you said you were. So when you say you you were born in California, were you born here in Beverly Hills, or were you born in another part? I am pretty sure I was born in Beverly Hills. I don't remember the hospital I was born at. Uh. But, admittedly, a lot of these details are obviously murky, and I guess I never really thought to ask about, like, you know, where I'm from, because that really just doesn't matter as much to me as I think it should. I've been uncovering a bit more of that as I've gotten older, because now I'm like, I want to understand these things more so I understand my parents rather than myself. Uh, But I, I truly think that it's not really about where you're from and more where you are. That's, I guess, my mentality about things. Uh, I guess I'm just not that complex when it comes to like where I'm where I'm from. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I try. I mean, if I ever ask someone where they're from, which I do with a lot of people, like especially friends, it's just 
it's just something that I'm curious about, and I'll even ask to, with an adult, what do you do for a career? Not that it defines who you are as an individual, but it's just more about curiosity. You want to get to know these people, yeah. and I think you want to get to know these people, and it's not judgment; it's just yeah. understanding. And I think there is a. I think those two things can be confused a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, I, I've just been kind of saying that fine line, but I think that's probably the most wise thing I've ever learned. Yeah. Uh, just like, I, I don't like to, to be like, oh, look how much wisdom I've accumulated. But I think the most healthy, th- I think everyone kind of, you know, pitches extremes and that is the least healthy thing. Finding that balance that is healthy for you specifically is, I think, very important. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, but that's kind of all I have on my birth and my family that I, at least I'm I have permission to speak of yeah I understand and uh, but also to clarify they are both citizens don't <laughs> yeah 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 if anyone's gonna misinterpret that that's on you cause I'm, I'm on the record there <laughs> nothing weird involving my family that I'm being honest I just would, I guess I want to talk I guess for me I pref- if when I'm interviewing someone I want to learn about them rather than I guess other people around them yeah if you if you want to interview my parents hey if you want an, an interview with my parents then get this video to 10,000 likes <laughs> yeah that would and that would be the day yeah, that'll be the day but uh yeah, yeah I mean I guess do you sort of I mean I, I now I'm going to be playing the interviewer here right. uh, but when, but like what about you where would you say like I assume you were born here I'm just guessing well actually no I was I was born in Santa Fe New ah. Mexico which a lot of people I've, I've told a lot of people that I'm from or no, not that I'm from but I was born in uh, New Mexico and they're like oh Mexico like outside the country and I'm like <laughs> No, New Mexico is a it's, U.S. state. It, yeah, it, it is. It is funny how well. Not, it's funny in the kind of depressing way of how much we like to keep each other separate. It yeah. is like, just, just don't, man. It, but yeah, I don't know. Just like I can understand where you're coming from because it can be a really interesting thing to talk about. Because sometimes you'll like people who you know, as an example, like aren't from here. They'll they'll have interesting views and it'll lead to interesting conversation. Yeah, and. Yeah, I've, I've lived there since I was, like, about six, and then that's when I moved here to California, and then I lived in West Hollywood for, like, about two years, and then came here to district when I was in second grade, mm. and and I was, I went to Hawthorne from second through sixth grade, and then BV when it became just the middle school, yeah. and now I've, now I've been here, so... I was a I was a BV kid, uh, right, right, right or die from the beginning. Wow. Uh, I it was a it, I'm glad I don't know. It was a, uh, I think yeah I, I don't know. Just like I was there for a lot for a while. I was there since honestly I was there since kindergarten. Like that's crazy. It's crazy yeah. to think like wow that's only middle schoolers. What are they gonna do to my poor second home? Yeah, it's. I mean, like, the, for those kids, like, like you, who've always been at BV their whole lives, I'm just thinking, wow, like, it's, you, this has always been your school, but now, even though you're in the same place, it's going to be a little different now that it's just the middle school. It, it was, cr- it was crazy find, finding people who didn't know the layout, uh, but it, it was, re- it was really crazy, and it's like, it's so interesting how just different people can completely terraform the same place. That's always just something super interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and really that's kind of all I want to say on that topic. If uh, You can cut this out of the video editor if you really want, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, well, that, that brings me to my next question. So, actually, so my next question for you is, uh, you know, tell let's talk about high school now, like your high school experience, as you will, like, uh, I don't know if I've said this already, but, you know, you're a senior now, you're going to graduate yep. in four I'm months. Yep, I'm going to need to... I'm gonna need to. All right, I'm ready. Uh, okay, high school has been probably the most important experience of my life so far. Uh, I feel like we all have moments of development, but probably the most I've had as a person happened here. Uh, they were, I mean, obviously this was kind of the first place that a lot of my passions were validated, and they were, and it was the first area I really got all of the resources I needed to start doing things I wanted to do. Because back in BV, we didn't have a creative writing class until we were about, I think until I was in 8th grade. So I never really got the tools necessary to do what I wanted. 
but or knew about the tools. So as I got into high school, I began meeting more people who I have a lot of people kind of, I know a lot of people who talk about, you know, they just want to get out of here, but I've met so many great people here. And so, and people are like, you know, it's all, they're all boring or whatever. But I'm like, it, that means that the people who are interesting always stand out more. And that's something I've kind of always lived by. Uh, to summarize my high school year, my each quarter, uh, freshman year was freshman year. It was quarantine. I keep bringing up that podcast. I'm not, I'm going to stop after this. But it was one of the most important years because it really taught me, like, there are people that I'm going to cut out of my life. Not because I don't like them, but because we both aren't going to put in the effort for this. And so it kind of taught me, like, it's okay to let go of people, which was something that was very important, or that maybe even if we don't talk every day, we are still friends. Uh, then sophomore year. Sophomore year is what I would argue was probably my happiest, but also least, least healthy period of life. And now to clarify, there was no substances, there was nothing like that, but it was kind of me, like, that was the first time I joined theater. It was the time I was really in the big shots here where I was writing, like, like two-page scripts. And it was also the time of my first relationship. Uh, and kind of combining all those factors, it led me to have a lot of experience and growth, but also, like, I was not ready for all of it at once, so I had to kind of learn and adapt. Then junior year was kind of just me restabilizing myself, asking, what do I want with my life, and what am I going to do? And this year has just sort of been like, I am going to pursue what I want to do, and I'm just going to keep moving towards those goals. I think a lot of people don't know they can do a lot of things. I especially didn't know that I could have done a lot of the things I can do now if I, when I was uh, in, like, freshman year. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing I want to give advice, or, like, something I really want to encourage all of you to do, is that there is so much all of you are capable of. And even if it's not, like, the best work in the world, just do it because you're going to get there. Some of the worst jokes... I have ever written eventually built up to worthwhile humor that got me officially hired. That is so important. Yeah, I agree. Like you, no matter what your passion is in life, based on what I've learned and what I've been taught, you, you are capable of it. You might fail in the beginning, you might have some bad luck, but you just keep up with it and you keep learning, you grow and you find new ways you figure out new ways to get around to uh you know whatever it is you're into to make you into that successful person and to make you better at whatever it is you're into whether it's basketball media theater writing, writing comedy whatever it is just just keep going with it and and find people who have who are older than you who have been but also, but also, another thing I want you all to do is like, because uh, I've also been work. I also work in the character building club, which is where I and a couple of my friends we help uh, young young writers try to build characters. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm bringing that up isn't just to freely plug that club so that you all can join, but more importantly, I think it's important for people who have learned to pass down that knowledge. Obviously, teachers are there, but there's but sometimes it's just sort of you need the right person to explain something to you. And I think that's something really important. Just ask questions or give answers. Do what you got to do to help people out. Yeah. And uh, what has been the, the best thing about your high school experience? That is a very complex question. But if I were to summarize it, I would argue it's the people. Uh, I... Because if not for a lot of the people I've met, I wouldn't be who I am today, for better or worse. Mm -hmm. We are our experiences. Uh, be it the close friends I've made who have helped me innovate the way I write and think. Be it the teachers which have guided me down a bunch of different pathways and taught me a bunch of different lessons, either intentionally or not. Uh, be it the classes that I've had to take, such a, be it the classes I've had to take, they all really come back down to the people I've been around. And I think that is either the best or worst part of your high school experience, in all honesty. Yeah, I, I agree. And I agree with you, too, about the people here at this high school. Now, I'm going to be real. There are some people that I've met here that I haven't always liked or I've, gotten along with. Yeah, no, like, uh, this school does host the scum of the earth. They're still here. <laughs> I'm not going to say everyone in here is a golden angel, but sometimes you'll run into people who are really important. Yeah, but but honestly, 
it, I feel like it's those people that have helped make me stronger and find ways to navigate on how to deal with difficult people like that because even as an adult you are still going to come across difficult people like that there are still going to be bullies as adults and at some point everyone is going to have to deal with that so I feel like it's better to get that experience here now in high school than to be done with school and for the first time in your adult life you're now getting that horrible experience and you don't know how to deal with it yeah it's it's you you got to it's exposure therapy you got to you got to deal with you know some people that you don't like in order to get used to it i think something else that's also very important that i think it's hard for a lot of people to learn as as adults this is for all you producers out there i want for every employee that you despise recognize what they're good at for every employee that you like recognize their weaknesses uh, cuz i remember when i was like casting the stuff i've been working on i was like okay who am i going to bring on and who am I going to interview? And I was like, okay, these are the people with the skills I want. These are the people I vibe with. But I recognize even the people I don't like, I could bring, uh, are very skilled. And I hope that, and I genuinely hope that those people find work because they are incredible, even if they aren't going to find work with me. Yeah, and that's, honestly, that's one thing I want to try and uh, tap into as a producer myself is just finding some people well, I wouldn't say, like, those who have treated me very badly, but, like, people that, like, I know and, like, no, don't no, no. really talk yeah. to. I always, biggest tip to anyone who's ever doing anything, ask the quiet kids questions. They always have interesting answers. Yeah. They just never think to say anything. Uh, I'm not saying work with people you despise, because that just makes it harder, but be able to recognize of, like, okay, even if I don't like you, it's not just that it's either you're not just a bad person, it's just that we don't vibe. Or, you are incredibly talented, but I cannot work with you. And mm -hmm. the ability to make a... Even if those things are technically biased. Like, yeah, it is because of my bias that I am making a logical assessment that I can't do this. It's okay. I think it's okay. I think we we always are told, like, oh, yeah, make objective decisions based on logic or just follow your heart. No. Find your bias and recognize it before you make decisions and be like, even if I have my opinions, I'm going to recognize the facts. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, what about the, the worst, what has been the worst part of high school? The worst part of high school. I'm just, I would also kind, I'd probably say the worst part of high school or like, okay, because the worst part, when you say the worst part, do you mean the most, the least enjoyable part or do you mean the least valuable part? I honestly both the least valuable and the and like yeah the, the least valuable okay. and the least uh, to unenjoyable. To s okay, to separate those two things a little bit, the least enjoyable I'd probably say has been some of the classes. It's not that our teachers are are horrible monsters and yeah. they're fill and and it's not what some par some of your parents will think or they're like oh they're filling my my children's brain up with propaganda. It's more just there are some subjects that I. Uh, when, sometimes I'll just walk into a class and I'll be like, wow, it's sure nice to learn quantum mechanics and it's going to be great knowing I never use this in life. Yeah. On the one hand, that it does teach you the skill of putting up with garbage, which you're going to have to do. There's, You're never going to get... You have to eat your evil Brussels sprouts before you eat your evil cake, uh, as someone once said. you got to find that... Again, you got to be able to push through that, but that doesn't mean that those pieces of work that don't mean anything to me mean more... I just recognize them as this is what I have to do. So that's what I'd argue is probably the least enjoyable, but the le or like the least valuable in top subjects. But even then, that was pretty valuable. Uh, the least enjoyable. Because that's, I, I mean, the least, the most painful thing, I think, was learning, like, learning that you gotta be able to stand on your own if you want to be there for others. I've been and I've met a lot of people who try to be a good friend to mask their own insecurities or to mask their own dis dissatisfaction with themselves. And that is the least healthy thing you can do. If you are not okay with yourself, you can't be there for others. Um, and I guess those are just some... I, I don't even think I'm answering your question. The worst parts of high school? Honestly, just... Or let's... I mean, what has been... Like, not, not what you've seen in others, but, like, for yourself. What have you... What have you least enjoyed about high school? What has been the hardest thing that you've dealt with yourself in high school that 
that like although you've had some good memories uh and good times in high school would have been the hardest times that you've had for yourself in high school they were definitely recognition of my own health because they're because as i kind of mentioned during sophomore year I was not a very I was a very happy person but I was not a very healthy person. I was someone who again no no substances or anything but I was someone who couldn't really who who hated being alone, hated having my own time and couldn't really focus on my own work. I think the most difficult thing for me was learning when someone I cared about, I needed to cut out of my life and also learning when I am like either when I need to talk to someone or when I need to like you know, deal with something. Because, uh, and yeah, if, like, for the hardest and most painful thing I've had to deal with in high school, it's probably cutting people off. So if, so the answer to your question of what is the bet, of what is the worst part of high school, it's the same thing as the best, the people. Yeah, it's, honestly, that's, the, the, I've never been, I've never had to deal with a situation like that yet. Like, in, in particular, when, when you have to cut, cut off someone that that you love and that you're in a relationship with like uh, you said it's funny we still talk we just but it's like i think another thing i want to clarify because we are actually running a bit short on time and if you want part two uh the, i think something that a lot of people don't get is that a relate is that a relationship has a lot of factors to it and this might be more for the february episode but i think the things that a lot of people need to understand is a friendship to a degree is a very, very... It, well, a relationship is a very strong friendship. It is when you are very close to someone in that kind of sense. So you need to be able to be around that person a lot. And that was definitely what we had. What we had. But also it's like the recognition of I care about this person a lot, but not in that way. Because I remember I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, you know, if you're still friends with her, why don't you just date her again? And I'm like, that's not how this works. There's a very large difference between a relationship and a friendship, and once you find that line and know what that is, because I've because sometimes there are two people who are great, they're just not great for each other, and they bring out the worst in each other. And recognizing that is something very important. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I mean relationships are just a whole topic on themselves, and they and I could go on about like a whole podcast about it, but yeah, we are, yeah. Well, I mean, based on what uh, according to what you said, now we are short on time so just stay tuned in for episode two of my interview with matthew and i look forward to hearing more about what you have to say yeah do you have any more questions that you think we could get in this uh in this final sec segment uh let's see let's see what's, what's a good topic to end with um well overall how do you feel i think you've you've talked about this but like how do you feel overall about your high school experience like how would you rated from one being the lowest like the worst to 10 being the highest the oh, best 11 <laughs> wow. i had a i think this is also kind of to scale it with my other like time time periods like i like when i was like i won't i don't really count like when i was super young because like either because hey, i can't really remember that and also like we're not i'm not gonna say we aren't that kids aren't people but we don't really form and think in the same way until i think i probably argue probably argue middle school was the point where i like began to think about things a bit more and then middle school was just miserable for me i'm not gonna get into it but it was just not fun so then high school was like me learning you know who my people are who i like being around learning a lot about myself and it was even if they're because uh <laughs> this is a quote i've been waiting to say all podcast and there's only there's like gonna be two people who get where this is from uh there's no such thing as a perfect world without bad movies you're never gonna have a perfect experience. You're never gonna be perfectly happy. It's not about everything being perfect. It's about having it be as good as it can be, and even if there are flaws, it's okay. You're never gonna, like your high school, to, to you, uh, like to everyone here, you're never just gonna have a perfect year. There's always gonna be something that goes wrong. Mm -hmm. I Actually, that was a very important production thing, like, uh, <laughs> Produ like especially for production, something always goes wrong. It's not about making the perfect production; it's about making it as good as it can be. And because yeah. the only reason we're happy is because we can be sad, and yeah. if that makes any sense to you. Uh, all right, uh, you will end it here. I am Matthew Nicknam signing off. And if this video gets enough likes, maybe I'll come back on. And again, this is uh, Mother Lucero here at my show, where I bring in different people. 
uh, from different career fields and different walks of life. And I look forward to episode two with you, Matthew. Yeah. Drop a like, subscribe, and comment below. He said it himself. Hey, man, I was a YouTuber. I get it. Good job, man.